Hey everybody, it's Sully Man of Pixel Master Pit. Um, I'm back. Uh, what I'm going to show you today, basically, is I found a an image on Pinterest of a rose tattoo, um, kind of in the neo traditional style, and um, loved it so much. Made this, and I figured um, I'd run you through the process. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I created a new document already. I'm going to go ahead and paste in a rough sketch that I created earlier. Um, let me know in the comment section if you guys kind of want to see me build stuff like this, you know, sketch through. Um, but as far as right now, I'm not going to, you know, waste your time and, and going through all that. So uh, basically what I did, I just pasted it in. I'm going to take this layer and turn it into a template. I'm going to create a new layer now. Um, and in this new layer, um, most people probably would think I'd just start kind of line, uh, using the pen tool to kind of line this out. Um, I'm going to show you another technique, um, pretty simple stuff, just using um, object stacking order to kind of help um, create the overlapping lines. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, I'm going to click on the pen tool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I have some colors set already. Um, and also I've created a default style. Um, I've showed this in previous videos, but you know what, let's just go ahead and do it again. I'm going to uh, delete that real quick. I'm going to hit D on the keyboard for default. And you'll see that um, this has created a um, black stroke and a white fill. Uh, so what I'm going to do is make sure that I have them the colors that I want them. So in the fill, I got it white. I'm going to tap X so it toggles this to expose the stroke on top. Um, I'm going to hit black here. Now I have it. I'm going to create a new style, a new graphic style for this. And to make this my default so that when I hit D at any point, it'll default to the style. What I'm going to do is hold down the Alt key, and then I'm going to click and drag this until you see the plus sign, that little hand with the plus sign on default. And what that just did when I release is made that specific style. I mean, it could be anything as the default. Okay, so let's get started here. Now, um, just to quickly explain why this is a template layer um, is because let's say I start creating a shape here. I'm going to go ahead and trace this out, and you'll see the fill starts to kind of get in the way here, where I can't see see the lines. I mean, I'm okay for now, and on uh, on top of it, you know, I kind of already know how I wanted my artwork, but I can hit hold control and click on the visibility toggling icon, and you'll see it'll, it'll gut out the appearance and just uh, allow me to see the path. Um, and that's why we create template, because when I click this, um, if I was to do Control Y shortcut to make all of them um, just paths, to, you know, toggling the visibility, um, if this wasn't a template, the sketch would disappear too. So that's why I do that. Um, so I don't need that for now. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, further refine this appearance. I'm going to click the align stroke to the outside. And I'm going to span this a little thicker. Um, I'm going to create a new graphic style so it basically remembers how I want this. Now I'm going to do the same thing. <clears throat> I'm going to hold Alt and then click and drag this onto the default. So that's my default. Um, okay, and that's it. And I'm going to move on. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle the visibility now. And you can see I, I, I'm exposing this part of the sketch. Now in my mind, I'm basically I want to keep in um, keep in mind the stacking order. So basically, the way this flower is built, this would be the closest to the viewer. Um, but you'll see these overlapping petals here, and this one's furthest to the back. So as you create objects, each new one is going to be above the previous. So if you keep that in mind, I probably should have done this one first because then this one will come next. So let's just go ahead and draw this one out. Now you'll see I'll skip this overlapping portion. And I kind of build it, you know, I build the parts in my mind there. Um, you know, you, most people think it would just line art just these sections, but when we're using this technique, we, we build everything. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and untoggle that. You'll see it's overlapping now. So what I'm going to do is select this and then holding Control shift <clears throat> and um, the open bracket, I'm going to go ahead and um, knock this back. Uh, it's the same way of going to Object Arrange. Um, and you can see all the shortcuts here. Open and close brackets and you know alternating Shift and Control or just Control to either send back uh, send backward once. Um, I, I went ahead and sent it all the way to the back. So I'm going to toggle this again and I'm going to zoom in. And now I'm going to create, I, I know how I want this and it basically it's 
the leaf folding back on top of itself. So I'm going to start from here. Well, there's an anchor point it's giving me. And then I'm going to go ahead and trace this out. It's close, and I don't have to be perfect with the artwork. I'm not concerned about that. Um, all right, and that's created that petal. So let's go ahead and continue on. So um, I see this this back piece as being um, important now. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of trace that entire shape out. And I can make tweaks along the way. Um, you should do the same. Don't be too concerned about being perfect. Um, we can always make corrections later if it's not working. Out. So now that that the um, the bowl I, I kind of think of for the rest of these petals is made. Um, I'm going to create these overlapping parts now. Or not parts, but petals. Um, so let's see here. Now, understand I probably will get a little quiet as I start making uh, more of these. There's only so much I can say about my thought process. Um, but also remember, you know, in the comments section, please feel free to... Uh, ask any questions or, or um, let me know of anything else you might want to see as I um, run through these tutorials. Okay, so I'm going to finish with this one here and then I'm going to take a look. I'm going to untoggle this and see how they're stacking. So I know this needs to be behind this one. So I'm going to hold control, open bracket, and that'll take care of that problem. Everything else seems fine so far. So I'm going to go back, toggle that out. I'm going to go ahead and create this big petal back here. And then we'll fix the stacking order for that one. And you'll see on the fly that I'll start to just kind of create my own little um, divots in the petals and, and stuff like that. Because remember, the sketch I created, it's just a rough. They're, they're just placements. Um, you know, anytime you're doing stuff like that, each stage is just a small part of the whole. You know, you don't, you shouldn't take each, you know, the beginning so serious. It'll, it'll stiffen your artwork and, and make it incredibly boring um, when you basically stick to, I mean, stick to a strategy, but, you know, don't, don't make, you know, turn it into scripture that you have to follow. Otherwise your artwork fails. It's just not the case. You know, you need to be open to change, basically. So let's continue on with this petal, and I'm paying attention to where it's overlapping in the artwork. I, I wouldn't carry this out beyond over here because it makes no sense and it would expose a portion that we don't need. So that's also something I'm keeping in mind as far as how things are stacking. So this petal that I've just created can probably go all the way to the back because it's so far in the background. So I'm going to hold Control Shift and uh, open bracket, and it sends it all the way to the back. Now, when I hold Control open bracket, that's step by step. But Control Shift open bracket um, sends all the way to the back, or close bracket to the, all the way to the front. So let's go ahead and toggle that visibility again. So I'm going to go ahead and create this one now. And let's see here. So I have this line. We'll, we'll deal with that later. I'm just going to create the contour for now. And a little spice to this one. Um, I see that I kind of want this hidden behind some stuff, but I'm also going to use it, um, let's see here, to, you know, we'll go there, that's fine. And then I'm going to stay within this petal over here so it keeps this portion hidden. Um, and then we'll deal with the, the top part later. So let's toggle this. Now keep in mind, I could create all these shapes and then worry about the stacking. I'm just going to kind of do it as we go. Um, remember, I'm using the shortcut, but if you don't know the shortcuts yet, go to Object, Arrange, Ring to Front, means all the way to the front, you know, skipping all the increments, or you can use Bring Forward, which just means incremental moves forward, um, Send to Back, or, or Send Backwards is the same incremental steps, versus Send to Back, which skips it all and just sends it directly to the back. Okay, so let's carry on here. Uh, I'm going to create this petal over here. Now I can see that we have a line here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and avoid creating that for now. And I'm going to add a little extra on this one here. That I think I want. Close the path and then kind of see where we're at. So um, now. 
thinking here how I want to create the overlap here. So uh, what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to use the the fill and not close the path to help create this next step. So uh, I'm going to click here, create the line that I see here. Let's see if I can get Illustrator to be tricked into doing this for me. So what I'm probably going to have to do is knowing the way the the fill behaves you see how this line um, there's like a, a line here that is created by the fill it's heading to each anchor point as long as it's open so i'm going to have to figure out how i can stack that that needs to overlap obviously but i don't want it killing this line here um so we're going to have to figure that out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this up so we're not covering Let's just go ahead and delete that anchor point, actually, and see what we have here. So, obviously, I'm going to have to move this down a little further to further erase this portion here. So, that looks good, but we're going to have to match it up with this line down here. So, I'll just move it down here. Whoops. Grab some stuff I don't need to grab. Grab this handle here, and that's good for now. Okay, so, and then I'm going to tweak this just a little bit. Suit my visual interest. Okay, so now we're using that, that open fill. Whoops, I should cut something here, see that kind of peeking out. It's probably not a huge deal, so I guess we'll have to kind of hide it. Uh, that's fine, that's fine. I guess we'll deal with that. I can always maybe tweak this one a little bit. Okay, that feels a little better to me. So I haven't closed this path. Um, if I expand this later, it, it'll keep that fill, but we can use this uh, behavior in Illustrator to kind of hide stuff, and and uh, that's really the point. I mean, this is just a tool. You know, you don't have to close paths if you don't need to. Um, so now, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, to this stroke. I'm going to uh, apply a profile. Um, I already have a whole bunch set that I use constantly, so I'm going to use this one here and see what. I, actually, we're going to use this one here. I'm going to keep the one side of it the actual um, default width that it is now, and then I'm going to have it taper to a point. So we'll see. Okay, that's that's a good start. I'm going to have to tweak it a little bit to match what I think it should look like. Uh, I'm going to hold Shift and hit, hit W for the shortcut for the um, the width tool, the stroke width tool. Um, and I'm, I'm going to head over to this one and expand that a little bit. I don't want to go beyond the actual, um, you know, the, the default width of the path uh, to kind of keep that tapered look. And that's cool for now. All right, so let's go ahead and toggle this again. I'm going to hit P for my pen tool and get back to work here. So um, I'm seeing, let's see here, we have a pedal back here, one way back here. So let's go ahead and knock this guy out. Um, I don't like the way it's looking there, so I'm going to tweak that just a bit. And then I know it's way behind all this stuff, so I'm going to, I'm going to use this pedal back here to kind of hide this one. That's fine. Let's go ahead and toggle and see what we can do to fix. Now, this has the profile that I just used. I'm going to set it back to uniform. Um, go ahead and throw this back now. Now we can see an issue here is it's not hidden back here. Um, and we're, we're running into a problem over here. So let's see. How can we handle this? I think with this one, um, Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably use my cutting tool to just cut this and then cut here as well um, to avoid. We'll, we'll just do a stroke on this one. So I'm gonna actually remove the fill. And what I did there is actually toggled um, toggled with X and then used um, the question mark key um, to or backslash to remove the appearance or the fill. So now I'm going to find my cutting tool here and I'm going to cut right here. Now I know I have, um, this will be uh, a black stroke that I'm going to stack on top of this one. Let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to move it, hold control shift and close bracket to then send this forward. Grab my cutting tool and cut right here. And I'm going to cut right here. Now what I can do is now that it's cut, I can remove this section. You can see we've already fixed this part. I'm going to select this one here, and I can see that the overlap's not working so well here. So let's just go ahead and tweak the artwork. I don't 
necessarily need this to be behind over there. And voila, problem solved. So again, we don't have to stick to the same technique the whole time. You know, we do whatever we can um, till it works. Now also, I've noticed this pedal goes behind this one here. But I don't have that showing here, so we'll have to tweak that a little bit. And that's a simple one. I'm just going to move it right there until the lines converge. And fix it aesthetically until I like it. <coughs> and toggle and get back to work. Okay, so I got... Let me hit P for my pen tool. And I'm going to create this one here. Now I'm going to bring this to a close. And add a little spice to it. And then I'm going to finish it off over here. But I want to make sure these converge and look like they're, they're smoothly joined together. And then hide this behind that pedal. Toggle. Now, like I said, whatever one that you're working on now is going to stack on top of the previous. So I'm going to go ahead and send that back. And then I'm going to grab both of these. And I, I need to send them behind this. We might have to use that same tactic again. So um, I'm going to leave that for now. We're going to deal with those all at once. Okay, so let's create this one behind here. something here. Now with that in mind, you know what, let's just go ahead and do it anyways. I'm going to keep it about the same depth beyond this line as these two here. Let's create this one here. There's that one. And then I'm going to create the overlap. Okay. And then the background portion. Uh, go back here. Nope, don't like that so much. That's a little smoother. And we'll come and join me. So now let's see what we have. So stacking orders messed up. I'm going to hold control and open bracket till that looks right. This is good. I want this one on top, so then I'm going to grab these three. I'm going to grab this one here, this one here, and this one here. This should be overlapping, so let's go ahead and fix that. Let's actually double check. Yep, that should be overlapping. Send forward. So now that's stacking properly, so I'm going to grab all these shapes now. Oh, something going here I don't like. Let's see what happened here. Something going on. Okay, so that's the issue. Let's go ahead and just move this anchor till they look a little smoother when they converge. And that's such a such a sharp turn. So now let's go ahead and select all these. Nope, not that one. This one and this one. I'm going to group them for now. Um, and then let's see here. Now I'm going to use a different tactic for these guys here. So head down here and just create this shape here. And then now in the appearance, I'm going to remove the stroke. And now I have the shape. So what I'm going to do here with these guys is I'm going to use a clipping mask. Or I'm not a clipping mask, but an opacity mask to remove the portion that I don't need. So with these, with these guys selected, I'm going to hit copy. And then I'm going to hit make mask in the transparency panel. If you don't see it, go to window, transparency, it'll pop up. I keep mine stacked over here because I use it so often. So with these selected as a group, I'm going to hit Make Mask. Then I'm going to click into the thumbnail of the Opacity Mask. Um, we did a previous copy. What I'm going to do is hold Control shift v to paste into place. Or you can go to Edit, Paste into Place. Paste into Front and Back will do the same thing, but they, they actually just work with the stacking order of where you want them pasted. So you can see here it's pasted in, but the artwork has a black stroke. And if you watch the opacity video, anything that's black will knock out. So I need to change the look, the appearance. So in the appearance, the stroke is black. Let's turn it to white, and they'll reappear. So now they've reappeared. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit the opacity mask, come back out to the artwork, and grab this little cutting shape, basically. I'm using it. So I'm going to hold Control and hit the letter X to cut. You can head to Edit, 
and cut to do the same thing. I'm going to select these guys again. We can see the opacity mask pop back up. I'm going to select it to make sure we're working inside of it. I'm going to hold Control shift v to paste in place again. Now it's in, but it's white, so it's not removing anything, so we need to use black. I have a swatch up here. You'll see when I hover it says knockout. I use that to knock out. Now, you'll see I have applied it to the stroke. That's not what I need it applied to, so I can either hit this to swap or hit shift X to swap. Now I'm going to remove the stroke as well, appearance-wise, and now that's gone. So I'm going to go ahead and click out. You'll notice that we have an issue here. Um, they're overlapping, so I need to tuck the, these, this group of shapes behind that stroke that we created. So I'm going to cut it, select this, and then um, Control Shift or Control B. So I go Edit, Paste in back. That means paste in back or whatever I have selected. So let's select this again, Control B. It'll paste it in place um, and behind. Now we have an issue here. So we have an issue here, and this is a reoccurring issue I've been having, so this might not be the smartest strategy. This is exactly why I wanted to record this live, so you can kind of run through the scenarios with me and see. It may look like things are perfect all the time, but that's just not what it is. We're problem solving as designers and artists. Um, this happens to be a problem, so we have to figure it out. So you'll see that the strokes fill is causing this to be cut out. Um, we've already cut this. This is on top. This isn't, so let's go ahead and figure this out. So what I think I'm going to do is just select this here. And you notice, um, because of the fill, I can select over here where that fill is. It'll actually select the object, whereas if it was a stroke, I'd have to select the stroke. So what I'm going to do is actually remove the fill. And it's exposed, you know, the, the areas that we need to fix. So I think all we have to do is just create a, um, a, a white fill here and um, tuck it behind this stroke, and I think we'll be okay. So... Um, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to select the pen tool. I'm going to deselect what I was working on. And I'm going to follow this path um, because there's two behind it. And just go ahead like that. And I'm going to go ahead and swap for now. Remove that. Swap it back. And then control, open bracket. I'm going to keep doing that till it's behind when I need it to be behind. That's good there. And then I have to move this pedal. Let's see what else. This one. Mm, we do have an issue there. So that stroke is overlapping. Maybe we can just extend this stroke a little bit. Get it to poke out here. That's too far. So then we have to bring this back in. Probably doesn't even need to be up that far. That's fine. There we go. Whoops, shifted that. I'm going to undo that. Okay, so that problem solved as well. Now we have one up here. So let's see here. Um, this might be just a stacking order issue. Uh, let's see. Isolation mode. Okay, this is grouped with these three guys. So maybe that group is what's causing the problem. I'm going to exit by double clicking. I'm going to ungroup. Nope. Ungroup will remove the opacity mask. So let's see here. Let's move this all the way behind, and we seem to be good to go. So that's fine. Now, there's also going to be a problem here. I know I'm going to want to color this guy later, so let's just go ahead and create the shape for that. I'm going to add some color just so I can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to remove the stroke. And I'm going to get click in here. So now sometimes because this is an open path, it'll suggest that you click here, which means you're going to continue it. To get around that, just click and hold right here. And then hold the space bar to move the anchor point. It will keep it from automatically clicking um, and restarting a path that's open. Um, I'm going to follow this pedal here. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's hidden behind the stroke. So we can kind of move quick and then stay behind this one over here as well. So that looks good, we're fine there. I'm gonna go ahead and select it now and just use my control backspace, I mean, uh, not backspace, but control open bracket to move that until it is in the spot that I need it. Now that it is, I'm gonna go ahead and knock it into white 
And I think we're good to go. So let's see here. We have one more petal to take care of. It's this one here. Uh, and then we can move on to this other stuff. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and create this one. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create this back portion of it. And then I'm going to hide it in this overlap here. I'm not too concerned. And I'm going to keep it behind these. Uh, actually, let's keep it with this stroke here. You know we need to hide it, so let's do that. So let's go ahead and hit D for default. Get back to our default look. We see that it overextends here, so doesn't matter. We can just push it up. You're not going to see that portion anyways. Now we need to figure out the stacking order of it. So this looks like it's behind this one here. So let's go ahead and use that cut technique. I'm going to hold Control X to cut it. I'm going to grab this here. Hit Control B. It'll paste it in place and behind what I selected. Um, let's make sure this right here is poking out the way it should be. Um, that's fine because we have to create the pedal overlap. So now we have to finish this portion here. I know this is confusing visually, but trust me, as you get used to, you know, using this um, method of creation, it gets that much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and click and then follow the stroke to avoid the issue we had earlier. Bring that to the point there. Finish. Untoggle. See what we got. So we got to get this point to match up. Now you'll see that the stroke ends abruptly. We can fix that by adding a round corner. You'll see it rounds it out so that'll help us smooth things out. I'm just going to move this over so it converges with the stroke there. A uh, bit of my OCD kicking in. I see that it's kind of you, you can see the smooth line and the little bump. In the, in the scheme of things it's not a huge deal. I just, I don't know, a bit of a perfectionist at times. So. Allow me this moment to be OCD. Um, okay, so this looks good. This is behind the stroke here. Um, we can always make sure by doing the cut technique, just cut it out, grab the one that you want, and then Control-B to paste behind. That's fine. Looks good. Um, all right, so that's pretty much all the line art for the, um, for the rose petals themselves. So we can add some extra stuff in if we want. Um, and I'm going to do that. Um, on a new layer, um, and then head back into this layer to reorganize the stuff. So um, this would have like a dip line in the middle, so I'm going to go ahead and, and add that in. And then I'm going to go head over to my stroke panel and then apply a profile to it. I'm going to do the same thing where it starts with the default stroke width at four points and then tapers, and then um, toggle the flip along path. So that looks good to me. Maybe expand it to, let's do like six. That's, that looks good. Um, and then I'm going to just apply some, some randomness here. But I don't want to have this profile. I'm going to head back to, to uniform and I'm going to thin it out. I want these to not stand out as much. Um, and the stroke widths um, to, to contrast each other or bring things forward, you make them thicker. If you want them to recede, make them thinner. So I'm going to make them... Um, let's go with three. I think three is good. And then I'm going to have something come out close to it here. This is definitely something you see in a lot of like the neo-traditional tattoo work. Um, I'm just going to add a couple of these in, in in random spots. And what I'm doing, if you see with the stroke, I'm following the planes of the petals themselves. I'm visualizing this petal in real life and how it would move and how it would dip and, and bulge out. And I'm following those dips and bulge that I imagine um, with these, these stroke lines. So um, Now, I'm also staying away from tangents. I don't want to create a line that comes out from here. I'll show you, for example. Um, it'll confuse the eye and make somebody think that this pedal is maybe extending longer. So stay away from tangents like that. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, just kind of keep adding random, but following the plane of this pedal and how I think it would expand out from the base um, of the rows. So, now you'll see I just went against my rule. I have it's so close to this back pedal here it almost it's creating a tangent for the eye it'll get stuck on it so I'm gonna go ahead and move that. That's much better. Um, I do kinda like this area though I don't want to sacrifice it but I just need to be aware of creating tangents like that. Um, 
And then I have one more close to this. And then maybe one here. And I create, now this, I know this petal is kind of folding out from itself. It's almost creating a cup, so I'm going to show that with this. Maybe a couple here. And to me, that's looking pretty good. Um, you guys can kind of go crazy if you want. Don't go too crazy is my suggestion, uh, but I'm not going to stop you. Uh, do what you think is right. Remember, it's, it's your own artwork. Do what you feel. Now, you'll see this is getting close to being a tangent. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's okay. I think we can get away with this one. They go off in different directions. I find that okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, now, the next step that we're going to move into is actually coloring this rose. Okay, so let's move into coloring now. So I'm going to keep these lines that I just added on the petals in a separate layer. It'll just be easier to kind of manage um, the petals when I'm coloring. So I'm going to go ahead and lock them now and unlock this layer here. I'm going to grab my Move tool by hitting V, or you can just select it up here. I've said this numerous times, learn your hotkeys. It'll save you time. So now the technique I'm going to use here is basically the same that I use in the old strawberry tutorial using, um, you know, mesh gradients. So, um, you know what, I'm, I'm actually going to lock this for now. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. Um, and let's see here, I'll stack this here. Um, and I'm going to actually duplicate the line art because I need to create um, the knockouts. That same technique we use to knock out these petals here to cut that edge off. I'm going to do the same thing when I'm creating these, these gradient meshes. So with this layer selected, it's locked. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit duplicate, or you can actually literally click and drag to new layer. It'll duplicate. So I'm going to do what I just did, but uh, two different ways. So I'm going to unlock this one, lock this new one. I'm going to select all. I'm going to hit object, expand appearance. I'm going to do this a couple times. You can see I, I did it once. I caught a few things, didn't get everything. I'm going to Object expand again, hit OK. Looks like it grabbed everything. And then I'm going to do one last step is flatten transparency. Um, it's got some presets to high resolution, which means 100% vectors. Hit OK. It'll do that real fast. Um, now what that's also going to do, you see the square created. It's, it's flattening the opacity mask. Um, but it's also creating white. I'm going to uh, hold Control shift d to turn the background off so you can see the transparency. I'll turn the sketch layer off, and you'll see it hasn't affected anything. The flattened transparency can sometimes be, be wary of that. I'm going to turn this back on, turn the background back on. Everything's good. Select, whoops, cancel. Select all. Do one last expand. I generally do this, it's like a four-step process, just to make sure I get everything. And then all I'm going to do is head to the Pathfinder panel. If you don't have it open, go to Window, head down to Pathfinder. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Merge. So it's going to merge the appearances here. Do not use Unite. Unite will just turn everything into one big shape. I want to keep the individual shapes, so I'm going to merge. So now you'll see it's uh, basically created a nice little line art. Um, I can toggle off those lines. They're still there. I didn't expand them. I didn't want to. Otherwise, I'd have to color each individual little portion here. That's why I kept them separate. So with this now, I'm going to go ahead and turn off these layers so you can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to turn off the background and you'll see I've merged everything and kept the strokes and everything. So with the magic wand I'm going to go ahead and select it. I'm going to select the strokes. I don't need them anymore and remove them. And now I just have the individual shapes from the artwork. Now you'll see that they're all grouped so I'm going to go ahead and ungroup them with Control shift g I have tapped that a couple times and now I should be able to select them individually. So now I have shapes that I can use to knock out. I'm going to keep that, let's just label it knockouts. Let's just go ahead and label this use line art. And then pedal lines. And then we'll call this color. So now I'm going to go ahead and lock everything. Unlock the color layer. I'm going to hold Control Shift D to turn the background back on. So now, let's get started coloring. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and just draw a circle out. And I'm going to target a petal at a time. So with the color layer selected, I'm going to hold down Alt so it centers on that petal. 
Um, I can always resize this later, but let's just go ahead and make it that large. Um, the colors that I'm going to use, I have a, uh, a darker red for the shadows. This one right here. I'll move that. You know, we'll keep it away from black. And then a mid and a light. So I have the extreme light red, a mid-tone, and a shadow. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and just... We'll just hit the mid-tone for now. So we can kind of see what we're doing now with the mesh tool. I'm going to go ahead and select that and just click in the center. And you'll see it just creates a... Um, you know, across, but now we need to imagine this as if it's a 3D program. Um, you can knock down the opacity to kind of see what you're doing. Um, what it basically did was I created the, the mesh object here, so this is the last selection. It just knocked this um, anchor point in the mesh down. The rest is 100% opaque. It doesn't matter. Don't really care. I'm going to move this like this. Now, Let's go ahead and turn the opacity of it back up. Remember, we can use the toggle to hold control, click this. So what I basically do is I'm lining up these uh, the crosshairs, if you will, on the pedal. And I'm imagining it as a 3D plane. So what I'm going to do now is, now with my direct selection tool, I'm going to select this anchor point and move this in closer. And I'm imagining this line right here. If we were thinking of it as um, coordinates, you know, your X and your Y, I'm going to grab this, whether it's the X or Y, it doesn't matter, but I'm, I'm going to draw out the way I think the plane moves. So I'm going to move this one down because I, I think the pedal, this is the highest point as it bulges up and then dips back down. So I'm going to go ahead and create how I think that looks. And I can use this line, you know, these lines to, to basically kind of follow that um, mental image. So let's go ahead and tweak that. It looks pretty good. I'm just going to move this in. And then the same here. I think the pedal comes up, dips down, and then comes back out and up. So let's mimic that here. So I can do that. Click this one, bulge that out, and you'll see that this line bulges up and then dips back down. I might want to move this in just a little bit more. I'll do the same thing on this outside one. Bulge it up. Well, then I have this lip that kind of comes back up, so we might have to tweak this. So, Actually, I'll just dip it down. Let's just give that a go. So good. I think that works well. Now, we can color this, but I want to have the actual shape there so I can kind of see what's going on. And now I also notice one thing is that I forgot to turn off the fills for those lines. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock this layer real quick. I'm going to select all of those lines. I'm going to head over to this appearance and just turn off the fill. I don't need the fill there. So that's one step that's much better. Now, with this pedal in mind, I'm going to go ahead and head over to my knockouts. I know this is the pedal I want. So I'm going to select it, hit Control copy I'm going to lock it. Head back to this one, select it, make mask, head into the opacity mask by selecting its thumbnail, and then I'm going to Control shift v to paste into place. And you can see it's trimmed it for us. So make sure to select out of the thumbnail to get back into the artwork. I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now what we can do is start to color this guy. So I know that the way this is resting, um, this is dipping down below um, the flower itself. So I'm going to want to have that section in shadow. So let's go ahead and select this one here and then select the color that we want that section to be. And you'll see that the gradient expands out where this, all the rest of these anchor points are the mid-tone. And the one that we just selected here is going to be the shadow tone. So it's expanding out in a smooth gradient, but it's doing it too much. So we have an issue. I'm going to go ahead and undo this. The way we're going to wrangle that in is by adding in more intersections. So let's say I didn't want that shadow to extend out beyond this line to about here. Let's create one there. And you'll see that it'll stop there. That might be something we want. Now what about on the sides? Maybe I don't want it to extend out beyond here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this here. I'll do the same thing here. But maybe I want it dark because it dips down here. We'll do that and then comes back to light. You know, the... the, the, the Possibilities are limitless, but I actually don't like how this created um, such a close line. So I did something here to mess up, so I'm going to undo that. Um, we'll come, I'm going to create one here. 
because I, I want a lighter tone and then keep some mid-tone here. I'm going to come back here, create here. Now I know if I create a division line here, it's going to extend the gradient out to this point. So I'm going to need to fix that too. But I'll, I'm gonna, I'll show you the process that I do that. So out here, I'm going to go ahead and use my lasso selection. And I'm going to select all these outside ones, including this one here. This here, and all these guys. I'm going to select all those and then just apply this color to them. So I got those edges real nice. So I can select all again and then use my lasso tool. Let's say I just want this guy here now to be the shadow color. I'm actually okay with that. Now, now you'll see with these lines, and I'm just going to focus on this middle one. I don't want to mess with these ones here. So these, these are fine. But I want to create a more extreme dip here. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab the mesh tool, and I'm going to go ahead and, and create some separation here. So I'm going to create a line here. Oops. Not like that. There we go. Just a single line, not a double line. Uh, and then I'll create one on the opposite side. So that one I want to have a lot of light to. This one I don't want so much. So this one I'm going to naturally have to make um, lighter. So I'm going to use direct select to select it, make it lighter there. And I'm, I'm happy with that. So to me it looks like there's light coming in and hitting this part of the pedal. So the opposing side that it, the light's not facing, it, it gets shadow. So I'm okay with that. So that pedal's done. I'm going to move on to the next one. So that's how I'm mentally mapping this out is I want to visualize where I think the light is hitting the pedal and where it's not hitting gets shadow and where it does hit directly uh, it's going to get light. So let's go ahead and get started again on, the, on a new one. So I'm going to start with this far back one here. I'm going to go ahead and um, with the circle I'm, I'm selecting a center point where I think the pedal is. I click here. Now you'll see that the circle extends here but if I hold alt it'll, it'll center out um, the expansion of the ellipse. So here we go. I've got it mapped there. I'm going to go ahead and just head right over to knockouts. I know the pedal's right over here. We can always, you know, knock this into a trace mode to kind of see this is correct. So I've selected it. I'm going to hit copy, lock it, head back over here, select the circle, hit make mask, make sure I select into the opacity mask, and then control shift V, paste in place. It's white, so it will um, expose it instead of knock it out. I'm going to select out of the opacity mask now and get back to work coloring. So now I know I need to create the gradient, um, the gradient mesh. So I'm going to select the center point here, and I'm good to go. Now I did this a little different this time because I wanted to show you something. So I have this in place, and now I need to get these the crosshairs to basically head in the direction that I think the pedal is heading. So I'm going to do that right now. And you'll see something. Uh-oh. The mass moved with it. So I'm going to undo that. The quick fix, just unlink each other. Unlink them, and now I can move this in the direction. I think the pedal is basically moving in this direction. And now that I've made that big move, I can now lock it again. I'm good to go. So now what I can do here is get back to bending this out. It should not affect the mask because I'm not actually rotating. So now all this stuff down here don't have to worry too much because it's basically hidden behind this, this section here. I just kind of need to focus on um, what is exposed. So I'm just going to basically kind of bend these out. And just keep in mind, think of this as this 3D layer that you get to kind of mold you know, the shape of. Um, so I'm going to head back into the mesh tool. I'm going to do the same thing on this outer edge. Um, I think I want a line so I can keep the lightness. And then I'm going to move them. Let's see here. It's bending there. So let's grab this one. I'm going to bend here. Maybe move this down a little bit. Reshape how I think it bends out. So I think it, it bulges out here and then dips back in behind. So let's go ahead and bend that up like that. Got kind of tracing, so this kind of dips down, comes back up. Now you can go crazy doing this, but I think um, the more simple you do it, the better it looks. Um, let's see here. I'm going to 
that's good there. So now I'm going to add that division line that I did on this one in the middle. I'm going to create a line there and create a line there. Nope, I went a little above it. That's where you get that double line I don't want. Make sure you pay attention to that. Okay, that's good. Uh, and then I'm going to add another intersection here for shadow. So I'm going to click, select right in the middle, creates the line. I think I like that. And then over here, I know there's going to be some shadow here. I'm going to click one there. So that's good. So now I'm going to grab the lasso while this is selected so I can kind of see all the anchors. Um, I'm going to select all these guys here and make sure I have them that light color. That's fine. And now I'm going to select all these guys here and I'm going to make them shadow tone. So that's pretty good. Um, I don't know if I'm... You know what? I think I'm going to add and I'm going to... Yeah, I think what I'm going to do here is select this. I'm going to, nope, not do that. Use my mesh tool to add another line right here so I can get some light in there. And just tap that. I think I like that. Make sure that one's light. That's good. Okay, so that's one, that one's done. And this is essentially the process um, each time. So I'm gonna move on to this pedal here. Hold Alt to center it. Let's go ahead and knock the mesh in and then get the direction right. So I'm gonna to toggle this to see. I've already have it selected. I just gotta match where I think it's kind of moving. Bring that in a little bit. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna to toggle it back. Lock this layer, head out to the knockouts, select that portion there. Control copy, lock it, unlock this one, select the pedal, make mask, select into the opacity mask, control shift V to then paste it in place, head back out of it. And now let's get back to the business of molding this thing. So I'm gonna select this anchor point with the direct select, move it down, this one here, this handle, I'm gonna bend it out so it looks like it's bulging out and then coming and dipping back in. Sorry about that, get phone calls in the middle of tutorials. <laughs> Shows you how live this stuff is. Okay, so this one here, I'm gonna have it bulge out and dip back down. I'm actually gonna scoot this in just a little bit closer. And, and keep in mind, this does affect um, the shape of the gradient. So keep that in mind, but it's not too big of a deal. So I like that, that's simple. Now let's just go ahead and, and add in those, those sections. So I'm gonna add a line here, a line on the edge here. Uh, let's see here, one over here, and one over here to kind of do the same thing on this side of it. Um, let's see. That Looks okay. Maybe one there, and maybe something right here, so I can kind of cover that whole area. Use the lasso tool. I'm gonna to select all these guys here. Oops. Oh, and this is another thing that we're gonna to have to get used to doing is um, I've expanded the layer to sh to expose the sub layers, and I'm gonna lock the ones that I don't want to be working with right now. I just want to work with this one. So now with the last tool, actually I'm going to start with the shadow here. I'm going to grab this section of them, all these um, sections there. That looks pretty good. I like that. I'm going to want to come out here maybe a little bit more with the shadow. And then these guys, I think I'm going to make a mid-tone. I don't want them too dark. Let's just see how it looks. That I think feels good. That feels good to me. So we'll go ahead. I want to do the same thing here. Knock that in the shadow, so it kind of gives it a feel that it dips down here and this, uh, the light's exposing here. So I like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and unlock those for now. Get started on this back pedal here. Same technique. Start from the center point where you think it is. Hold Alt. Um, this time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the mid-tone. Um, let's go ahead and we'll toggle this layer. Oops, not turn it off. Hold control. Oh, that's right. I forgot you can't um, can't toggle sub layers. So let's go ahead and do this one. So with that selected, take the mesh tool in the center point. Rotate until it matches our pedal. I think that's okay. Okay, that looks good. Toggle that back. Lock it. Head over to our knockouts. Find that section. We don't want that. I know it's right next to it. That's good. Hit Control Copy. 
lock the knockouts, head back over here, select this one, make mask, head to the opacity mask, paste in place, head back out of it. Okay, and now with this one selected, I know I can lock the rest of these guys so I don't, they don't interfere with what I'm doing. Grab our direct select and start molding again. So I know this petal's kind of starting from the base down here, comes out, dips down, then rolls on top of itself. So I'm creating the roll. We can't really mimic here or overlap with this plane, so I don't have to go too far. I'm going to have this kind of bulge out here, dip down here, and bring this out to create the bulge there. So let's go ahead and add some extra lines here. I'm going to do here and here in the center point so I can create that divide. Um, I'm going to create a line on the edge here so I can get some, some lightness over here. Maybe one more right there. I'll do the same thing here on this edge. Um, and I think maybe we'll do one more right there. So I'm going to grab the lasso to select groups of anchor points at a time. So I'm going to select all these guys. This one here. I hold shift to add to that selection and then knock some light into it. I like that. I want to make these guys much darker. So we'll hit those guys shadow. That feels good. This feel, I feel, is a little too light, so let's go ahead. We'll add an anchor point right here in the mesh. We have that dark selected already, so it makes it dark. We don't even have to do that. So that's good. All right, so I want to go ahead and unlock those guys. Moving on, I think I'm going to target... Um, I'm going to target this entire shape right here. This portion, this portion, and this portion all in one. So I see that as one big shape. Um, so let's go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to create, I think this is kind of the center point of it. I'm going to click and start dragging my ellipse, hold alt to center that. Expand it out. So I'm a little off, that's fine. We can always move it. Um, I can toggle. Visibility is kind of getting crazy. I just need to see where my center point is. I know the, the edge because I can see it. And I think that's good. Let's hit our mesh. And it should follow those center points. That's good. Toggle back out. So that's fine. Let's do our knockout. I'm going to lock this one head over here. Now this is going to be a three piece. So I might actually want to turn this off for now. Select these three pieces. I'm going to hit control C to copy. Lock this guy. Unlock this layer. Turn it back on visibly. Select that pedal that we're going to be working on or pedals. I'm going to hit make mask. Select into the opacity mask. Control shift v and now I have those shapes. So I'm going to head back out of it so I can start working on the artwork. And basically that, just get to work. So I'm going to select the center point, drop it down, and you can see I've already created the, the rounding effect. Because I picture this as, as um, it's like a towel wrapping around your body after a shower or, or something along those lines, or a bowl or a cup, you know, however you, however you can picture it. Um, I just see it basically, you know, if you had a um, um, let's say a bucket and you wrapped you know, a rag around it, that's the shape that you kind of want to have mentally. So let's create that. So that's good. I think down here I want the shadow to be. And let's just add in some extra points here. And they all should basically follow that, that curve. So that's pretty good. I'm going to head here. Um, and at these edges, I'm going to create some lines and maybe one there. Actually, one more on the edge. So now let's grab our lasso to grab, you know, select groups. And we can move slow here. I'm going to select all these guys on the outside and make sure, oops, we got a lock. Let's go ahead and lock. And that should still keep the selections. It just, when you lock them, it'll, it'll um, knock out the ones that, that it's selected and keep the ones that um, are available. So that is shadow, so we're good there. So what I'm going to do is grab maybe just these sections here and knock them into light. So let's see what that looks like. I don't like that. We're going to go mid-tones. That feels a little better. I don't like how abrupt it stops, though. So I'm going to select all to see what we have. Um, I'm going to select these guys here. We'll knock those back into shadow. Okay, that feels a little better. I don't want this is still a little abrupt for me. Um, 
let's go ahead and hit that into shadow. You know what? That's okay. I think that's good. That's subtle enough. Um, I'm happy with that. So I think with that one, I'm done. So let's go ahead. You know what? We'll just keep those guys locked. Um, our next shade, let's start on this petal right here. So I'm going to think, I think the center point's about here. Hold Alt, just center that out. Let's go ahead and use our mesh tool to knock the shape in. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to turn this layer off in a moment, head to my knockout, copy that, lock it, turn this back on, select this one, make mask, Click into the opacity mask, Control shift v to paste into place. I'm going to select out. Now I, are, I know I need to rotate, so I'm going to unlink the mask. It'll keep it there. It's just keeping the mask from being rotated along with the uh, artwork that it's uh, applied to. So I'm rotating this to where I think um, this is bending. So I, you know what? I actually think it's going to be here. So I'm going to expand that out. That's good. Now I'm going to lock them again and then get to work on, on creating the shape. So I'm going to select this anchor point here. I'm going to bulge this out because I feel like this is going to actually come back up. Oops, let me undo that. This is going to come down, but I need to move this up. Because I feel like there's a slope kind of here. Now this is the petal folding out here. So I'm going to draw this line close here and then have this bend out. Get this real close, do the same thing. This kind of does dip down, so I'm fine with that. It's coming out like that. And I'll have that dip down like that. So that's pretty good. I'm going to make this a little bit, a little more extreme. Bring that out here. And I'm okay with that. Now we're going to add in our extra line. So I'm going to go ahead and pop one in here. Do some reconstructing. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add what I, there should be a line up here and there running across. I have to tweak that a little bit. That's fine. Move this up as well. And that's okay. So all in all, I don't think these guys need to be in shadow at all. So I'm going to make them all midtones. And now I'm going to apply the lights to where I think they should be. So up here, I think we'll have light. Um, I guess over here too. So I'm going to use my lasso select. Select these three, get the light into these guys. I'm, I'm thinking I need a, a new mesh anchor point intersection here. That's fine, and I think this one needs to be light too. So. Now we see some subtle stuff here, and that's fine. That's the whole point. Um, let's see here. Maybe I might be able to put one right in here. Let's see how that works. I'm going to, with that one still selected, yeah, that's subtle. I kind of like that. Let's try this one too. See what we get out of this one. Hmm. I don't like the line it's creating, so I can always add in another mesh point and make that one light. That I think feels a little better. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Um, okay, so now for the most part, actually, I think we have about one more left that we can do, and then the rest of these we can actually just use gradients. We don't even have to go into the mesh. Uh, so I'm going to lock this here. I'm going to go ahead and create, um, I think the center point with this one will be about right around in here. Hold Alt to center it out. I know it's going to be long and stringy, so lock this guy here. Head back to Knockouts. There it is. Hit Control Copy. Lock the Knockouts. Head back to this one. Unlock. Select this guy here. Make Mask. Select into the Opacity Mask. Control Shift V. Paste it back in. Hop back out. I'm going to unlink them. That way I can get my rotate going. And now we have the length we need. Now I know these two points are going to create an intersection with each other through the middle. So I can kind of angle those where I think they need to be. That's good. Let's go ahead and lock this and start adding. You know what? Yeah, it's mesh. Start simple first. Don't start adding in all the lines. Just get the basic shape first and then start adding the intricacies to the plane. So that's pretty good. I think this is bulging up, comes back down, and then this is going to come back and wrap around. So let's create that wrap around. 
So let's get there. Let's move that out. Uh, when you mash points together, it can cause some weird uh, overlapping in the gradient. So make sure you kind of leave some room for that stuff. So that's good there. Whoops. Let's pull this in. Uh, I'm going to tighten these guys up a little bit. But you see see how I'm, I'm creating this like rough little S shape? That's what you want to avoid. And you can, you know, grab the handles. Move those in like that. Slight little bend there. I can always tuck this in too if I want to. Bend this up. That feels pretty good. And we can add our extra mesh points now. So I'm going to have like a shadow line here. So that's pretty good. And that might just do it. I'm going to do some insurance on the light out here. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to grab my lasso select. While I have that, I'm going to grab this guy here, this one here, and this guy here. That's good. And let's hit mid-tone. That's good. That's subtle. This one is exposed to a lot of light, so I'm, I'm not going to add a shadow on that one. And that's good. So let's see here. Now basically what I can do is we'll lock that one now that we're finished with. I'm going to head over to knockouts, and now I can basically just grab all these guys, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Grab these smaller ones. You know what? Actually, this smaller one is a part of this larger whole one, so I'm going to copy this, lock real quick, head over to this one. Unlock. Now I just need to select this one. That one's in the way. That one's in the way. Which one is it? Here's our triple shape. Let's select this one. Now we can just head into the mask here and then Control Shift V to paste in place and it will fill it up. So we can head back out. Uh, let's lock this again. Head back to knockout. So let's go ahead and grab these guys here. This out, so I'm going to hit Control Copy to keep all my to just copy from there. And now I'm basically done with knockouts. So I can just turn that layer off. If I need to do masking, I have it there. I'm going to unlock this one here. Select the layer, Control Shift V, and now it'll paste in all these individual shapes. So now we basically just need to start slapping gradients in. So this is rolling over itself. I think the gradient will handle that well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use Shadow into light and then I'm going to change the direction using the gradient tool or just hit G and I know the shadow side is going to be here and the light side is up here so let's just go ahead and position this is the light point we'll switch it I want that the shadow point and then I'm going to rotate the angle and then I'm going to pull it in down here maybe just a little bit more a little more than that we'll keep it real tight there that's good done with that one Basically, same thing here. Let's hit our gradient. It's going to use the previous gradient that we had. So we got to switch this up. Actually, you know what? Let's just do that and redraw. I know this needs to be my shadow point. Um, the angle might need to be changed a little bit here. I'm going to pull the color in this time instead of the gradient. Um, okay, with that, I think. Yeah, I like how this dips back down. The shadow kind of tucks into this one. I'm okay with that. So we're good there. This pretty much is all shadow, so I'm just going to knock it into shadow. This one here, apply the gradient. This needs to be the opposite because this is kind of overlapping here. So we'll just switch that up, grab our gradient tool, and maybe tuck the light in just a little bit. Nope. Maybe bring the shadow up just a bit. I like that. Done with that one. Gradient here. Um, we'll switch that to shadow there. Let's see how I feel about that. Maybe not. Maybe. Yeah, that's okay. I like that. We'll grab the inside portion of that same petal. Um, I think this side here would be shadow, so I'm going to hit the gradient tool again. Knock that into shadow. That exposed its light. This one here, apply the gradient. Um, this one I'm going to use radial so I can get two sides of the shadow. Um, or not two sides of the shadow, but a, a center point for that. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and expand the entire thing out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. And let's see here. I'm going to now make this more oval in shape. Um, I'm going to bring this 
shadow down right here. Maybe tuck it a little bit more. And I think that should be good. Yeah, it's subtle, like it, good, move it on. So now that we uh, want to apply the gradient here, I don't want radial, I'm going to go with linear on this one. Um, let's see here, switch to our gradient tool by hitting G. Start from this point here, that's okay. I'm going to actually move this up, move the line up a little bit. See how I feel. No, I don't like that. I'll select it again. We'll just bring this back down. Tuck the line a little bit more. That feels right. Good with that. Same thing. Gradient here. Just that's down here is kind of tucking in, so I'll leave the light up here. That should be good. This one, I think I'm not even going to play around that much. We'll just knock that mid tone. Same thing here, I think I'm going to go mid-tone, and then just solid light on this one. Actually, you know what, we'll do a gradient on that one as well. I'll just have it fade a little bit more so it's subtle. And just a bit more. That's good, and then this one I definitely want to have um, you know, in linear, so I'm going to gradient. No, but I'm actually going to... Add in light on this side, so there should be some balance light here. So now we can get both light sources balancing there. So there is the the flower portion. Actually, I forgot this little piece right here. Where is that piece? Probably still in the knockout section. So. Head over to Knockouts. Go ahead and grab that. Control copy. Knock this up. Shift, uh, Control Shift V to paste into place. I'll just knock that into midtone. And I think that's good to go. So yeah, now we're done with the flower portion. I'm gonna turn the sketch on. Uh, looking good. I'm gonna turn the knockouts out for now. I'm gonna just drag it up here because I kind of don't need it for the moment. Um, and that's our flower colored in. Looking pretty good. In the next section, um, we're going to go ahead and start line art, uh, lining out, not line arting, lining out the uh, the leaves and the stem. Um, that's kind of we're going to use the same gradient techniques and, and uh, line art tactics that we did in the previous section for the line art on the flower. Okay, guys, we finished up coloring in the line art uh, from a previous section um, of the rose flower. Portion. So uh, we're going to work on the line art for these leaves, which should be fairly simple. I'm going to do some duplication uh, for sake of time. Um, you know, I don't see the need to you know do each individual leaf. Um, you can do that. that that'll definitely add um, a little variation, which always is um, adds interest. But uh, like I said, for sake of time, I'm not going to bother with that today. So I've already created a letter, uh, letter, a layer, and named it uh, stem line art. So what I'm going to do is, um, in stem, I just kind of group the leaves in stem all in their own section. Just made it stem. Um, so I'm going to start with the, the leaf first. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to trace the contour um, of this leaf. And I have a sketch here. I don't necessarily have to keep exactly with it, which I'm not. Um, and just basically kind of trace this thing out. So I'm going to turn toggle this into... Um, uh, where I just see the paths and it removes the appearances. And what you're going to see me do is at, at each intersectioning line here, I'm going to uh, add a little bit of a point to the leaf. Um, I noticed the leaves on a rose um, basically have these sharp little tips throughout. It's not exactly the anatomy of it. This is just kind of how I want to do it. Um, you all are going to have your own kind of different look at the end of it. And that's basically the point. So I'm just going to basically trace out this half here. And then I'm going to create another half over here. So just, you know, stick it close to the sketch, but it, the, the sketch isn't a law you have to follow. Um, you know, this is, this is all about experimentation and having fun. Um, to me, it's no fun to sketch something out and not make changes along the way because then you're just some sort of robot or machine that, um, you know, it's just 
you know, creating something that uh, doesn't breathe so well um, or have life to it. So, okay, that portion's done. And now that they are, I can kind of tweak the appearance. You'll see that the stroke is aligned in the center, and I want them on the outside so we can, you know, have those nice, nice points to them. And I don't know if I want rounded edges, so let's experiment. Um, no, that doesn't look good either. So yeah, we'll go back to round. Um, and I think in the previous video, these were about four or five and uh, stroke width. So I'll leave that there. So now I'm going to toggle this back out again. Um, now I know that the stroke is aligned to the outside of these paths. So I'm going to create some lines here, um, but I'm not going to stick to the exact sketch. So what I'm going to do here is just have a black stroke applied and that's it. And I'm going to head in here and just start creating the lines that I feel I want to have. So I'm going to stick with these for now and then add in some extra ones as I go. Because, you know, once you sketch something, you're going to find over time that, you know, it's not, it's, it's not perfect. It's just not, not always going to be there. So you have to be open to the change. And at the same time, uh, and I'm sure you've experienced this before, that after you're done with a piece of artwork and you've stared at it long enough, you start to find problems with it. So, I mean, it just further proves the point that just don't, you know, it's not uh, it's not scripture. Don't stick to the sketch stringently and think that you know if you don't, you failed. That's so not the case. Generally, you're just only going to improve on. Uh, just like right now, I'm I kind of you know through talking. It's it's difficult to do art and talk at the same time. But I, this is bending down the way it shouldn't. It, they, they, the line should follow the way the plane is moving. So this is kind of starting from down and then bulging up and over the plane. And then starting to recede down just a little bit more. So, and that's that one. Now I know in the sketch I had these points meeting each other perfectly. They don't. They actually oppose each other, which strengthens um, the structure of the leaf. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make some tweaks there myself. And this is kind of dipping back down. So I'm kind of finding where the gaps on this side are, and filling in from there where those lines are. Um, also, uh, I mentioned this in a previous video. I'll show you when you get close to an anchor point, sometimes it wants you to start again. If you're real close, click and don't move, and then hold space bar, and then, you'll, then you can move without affecting uh, the bend of the anchor point, and then just release, and you're good to go. You won't have the, uh, the other anchor points kind of basically messing with you. No sense in letting an anchor point bully you around. All right, let's see here. So I'm going to have this head over here. I'm going to finish out with that same tactic. Click and then spacebar move that somewhere else. So let's go ahead and toggle that on. Um, okay, we got some tweaks to make. We can see that we went maybe a little over on some of these guys. Actually, a lot of these guys. And you know, you can always toggle if you're having an issue of finding which is doing what. Just toggle the visibility. A little bit of an issue there. I shouldn't have done that, but we can always go back. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to select all these. Whoops. These guys here, and that's okay. This one's probably not. Top of this again. Uh, let's see. This one here, here, here. I should be able to move just a little bit. And not affect it too much. Get those hidden away. And now I can do the same thing here. Just hover until it, the anchor point exposes itself. 
So I'll just kind of move around. Okay, now that I got them all selected, just push them in a little bit. Grab this guy here, push him in a little bit. And this guy again, he's causing some problems. I don't like how sharp this kind of turns, so I'm going to add a little bit of M here. Oops. Don't want to do that. Now, if I click this and hold spacebar, I can move again. So, keep that in mind. Okay, let's select all these tips here. Okay, we're going to make some tweaks. Final tweaks here. Push that back a little bit. Okay, that's good. Let's check these edges here. Fix this guy down here. And I want these lines to kind of converge, so I'll push that one in a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Now let's just fix these guys. I'm just going to go one by one now. Making sure to kind of follow the flow that I see the plane doing. Make sure to space that out. Bring this one out a little bit more. And that feels pretty good. I like that. So that's one leaf. And I can move on to the next one. I mean, if I really want to be lazy, I can basically go in and just duplicate this guy. You know what? Let's just go ahead and do that for sake of time. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the stem that comes out from this guy. I'm going to have him come all the way up through this center of the leaf. And then come back out here. That's okay. I'm going to add a fill now of white, just to kind of see what I have. I'm going to go ahead and align the stroke on the outside and maybe thicken it up a bit. That's a little too thick to me. Um, let's see what just total black looks like. Let's see. Toggle my fill. You know what, I kind of like that. I think I'll keep that. So now I have a color in mind, so we basically, we have the petal shape. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply a gradient to that. And this is, I have a gradient set aside. So I'm just going to click that gradient. And this is just kind of like a um, tan or beige that I have applied to this. So I'm going to go ahead and have the shadow side here. Um, I'll pull it back a little bit. That feels good to me. Do the same thing here. Apply the gradient. Now I know um, it's counterintuitive, but the light here, if, if light was shining down, the shadow side would be here, so the light on the opposing would be there. That actually feels pretty good there. It looks pretty good, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to take one more look. Let's see what this looks like. Um, you know what? I'm going to do a gradient from here so the stems dark and it's centered I like that a lot so that's basically that that's that's that leaves so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna avoid the stem on this one deselect it I'm gonna group these guys I'm gonna turn this and then the cool part is um, uh, with that free transform tool if you hit E um, you can then do some kind of um, you know free transforms basically I'm gonna hold control after I select that corner and then I can kinda of just push that in and that's enough to make that leaf look different but you also want to pay attention to the lighting it might change a little different um, let's just see if we switched let's see if we switch it around let's see what we get maybe that maybe that light this time we can drag out gradient Maybe switch this one up. 
see what we get out of this. Um, kind of like that, so we'll leave that. And then it just basically, we draw in the uh, stem running down the center for this one. So I have the um, smart snap and guides on. I'm going to hit Control u to turn that off right now. Well, oh, actually, I had it off. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and just go ahead and, and, and draw this stem out of here. So I'm basically just following. Oops, see, I've, I've created an issue here. It, it um, continued on a path that was already there. So I'm going to hit undo. Um, I'm going to delete this for now. Whoops. I'm going to back up. Deselect. And now I have to pay attention to see how it wants to snap to that. You can go in in the settings and turn it off. Uh, it's just a pain in the butt. I'm going to just click out here, drag this in, and then start. And just pay attention if it wants to see right here, wants to you know continue on this um, path here, just use that same technique. So I'm going to grab this here, maybe click out here, drag it in. Click out here, drag it in until I get out of the thing. And then I'm going to tweak this just a little bit artwork wise. Come back in, finish this up. And then apply this to it. Let's go ahead and reverse the gradient. Let's see how I feel about that. That's okay. I don't like how fat this is here, so I can tweak that. Bring that down. That's pretty good. Um, I don't like how the gradient is there, so I'm going to actually push this in and then throw the black back in. And maybe it doesn't need to be super black, so I'll just click in here and it'll actually grab that color there and use that. So. That feels pretty good, so let's go ahead and just duplicate again. Drag this guy. I'm going to go ahead and um, do a reflect on this. And I've already tweaked um, my keyboard shortcuts uh, because I reflect things quite a bit. If you want to, go to Object, Transform, and Reflect. But you'll see I changed it, so I have minus Alt, Control, and X. Um, so I can do that quickly. Throw this in. Um, do I want that facing that way? Yeah. So we'll do that. And then I'll kind of hit the free transform, and then I'll bulge this guy out here a little bit. Click, and then hold control to tuck him in right there. Click, and then there. Let's tweak that enough. Twist, push it out a little bit. Okay, that's good. And then with that, I'm going to go ahead and drop these behind the flower, that layer. I actually got to get behind everything. Okay, that looks good. Um, okay, one last one. I'm just going to grab him. Turn him a little bit. Slap him right there and then use my arrange to draw him in the front. But I'm going to have him converge to, onto that stem there. So that's pretty good. And now I basically just need to add in uh, the stem. So I think it runs center here, so it might have been a little off. No problem, no big deal. And then you see it's kind of trying to start to snap me again. Click outside, hold spacebar to shift it in. And now, why am I not just using a stroke for this? Um, you know, that's a good point. Let's just do that. One line makes it simple. Click, drag in. And what I'm going to do is turn off this appearance. On the gradient, make, this, uh, make that just a stroke. We'll expand it out to the thickness that we want around the edge so it looks kind of nice down here. I'm going to throw it all the way to the back with a control shift um, open bracket. Um, let's see here. And then in the appearance panel, we can do some stuff, but let's go ahead and apply a gradient stroke to this. Um, let's see here. I don't necessarily know if I want that previous one. That's what I have. Let's see. Okay, that's fine. Uh, then I'm going to make it um, uh, an across stroke. It's more, I, I think of it like a tubular um, gradient. And then in the appearance panel, I'm going to apply another stroke. I'm going to have, I'm going to use the one that's below the top one for black and then create my line art for that. So that's 
Let's get it there. Okay, that, that's pretty much it. Um, that is our rose. Um, you know, we used a lot of different techniques to kind of complete this. Um, you know, uh, th th I mean, there's just plenty of other stuff that you can apply to this. You can, you know, maybe duplicate this section here with, of just the color, apply Photoshop filters to it. Um, obviously, add more leaves and, and, and what have you. Um, but I think in this, you can take a lot away from using gradient meshes, um, you know, not being so um, rigid when it comes to sticking to your, your, your sketches and, you know, all sort of sorts of neat little things that I hope will, you know, speed up your workflow. Um, I definitely want to take a moment to thank you guys for watching and all the continued support. Please remember, comment in the comments uh, section. Uh, I don't care if you troll the hell out of me. Love that stuff. Uh, don't mind rolling in the mud with you guys. Let's have some fun with it. And also, please, any suggestions or you know tips that I might have missed or anything like that, just go ahead, drop it in the comments section, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Sometimes you'll, you'll want to be urged to, um, like on this style, just use a...